Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool, New York, as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Epiphany. Whether you're with us this morning or in person or online, please know that however you've joined us, your presence always enriches our worship. The glory of God is offered and revealed when and where it is least expected. God uses our lips to declare that glory, inexperienced and hesitant though they may be. God uses our love to demonstrate that glory and so urges us to exercise it. God uses Jesus of Nazareth, water and the word, bread and wine, to reveal God's glory when and where God chooses. Take heed, lest the glory of God slip through our midst, unnoticed. I invite you now all into a time of confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live 
as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 644 for those of you with hymnals. Although I speak with angel's tongue, hymn number 644. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words into your mouth, See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 71 responsively. I will begin with the odd verses and you may respond with the even. In you, Lord, I have, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Find your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I 
Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. And as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we see, we'll see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of all of these, is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. are interested in coming forward or are they too old and grown up to come forward now okay well you know what I'm just gonna do my kids message anyways because I know that there's some up there and maybe even Jasper is up there and if you are hi Jasper well one of my favorite books is called Images of God. And the image that I picked for today is breath. Breath, our breathing in and out. And so maybe all of you can kind of help me. What are some of the ways that we can describe or imagine or experience God as breath? Anybody have any ideas? How about the first cry of a newborn baby? That would mean it for me. Hmm? Or perhaps on the other end, the last sigh of a loved one. For sure, we might experience God there. Perhaps as the wind blows and the the clouds in to give us rain when we need and want it, of course. Um, Mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. We might even find God's presence in that saving experience. A cool breeze that refreshes us in the summer or fills our sails. And perhaps even when we see the fog of breath in winter, it may remind us of God's own breath, breathing into God's first creation of us, right? God breathed into that first man to become a living soul. So even though we cannot 
see or touch God, the Bible does describe many ways that we can still discover God in our world. And one way we imagine the Bible gives us is breath. God is the strong wind that shapes the earth and the sea that makes the stars shine to the farthest edge of the heavens. God is the breath of all living creatures, the breeze that stirs their hearts, that refreshes their souls, and renews their spirits. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for Jesus who comes to be with us. Help us to always see him in our neighbors and learn to share your love. Amen. So if you would put this on the back tables when you leave today, that would be good. Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, There were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. It's starting to sound a little bit like a soap opera, I think. Previously, on Jesus at Nazareth, we left the hometown crowds at peace in Jesus' presence and amazed at his words of freedom and restoration being fulfilled in their hearing. Last week, they'd been so proud to welcome him home into their synagogue, and not much has really changed since then. We're still in the synagogue, and Jesus is still among them. They had been amazed and speaking well of him, but now they're whispering back and forth, reminding each other that he is Joseph's son, The atmosphere among them quickly changes as Jesus now seems to be saying all the wrong things for this crowd. First, he recalls a story from Elijah's time when God miraculously provided food for a poor pagan widow, noting that there were many poor widows in Israel who didn't receive such miraculous food. 
Then he recalls a story from the time of Elisha when God miraculously cured Naaman, a pagan leper. Again, noting that there were plenty of lepers in Israel who weren't miraculously cured. To them, it sounds a lot like Jesus is favoring all those sinful pagans over his own hometown folks, telling them that God saves pagans while many of the Jews in Israel suffer with the same afflictions. They don't like what he is saying at all. It's not what they want to hear. And since it's not what they had expected, they change their view of Jesus completely, basically declaring that he is a false prophet, the punishment of which is death. It's no wonder that so many prophets are reluctant to speak and to act in God's name. Jeremiah was sure no one would pay any attention to him just because of his age. Yet God appoints him to oversee nations, to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Still, the people prefer to listen to another who offers what seems to be an easier way. Just go to the Sabbath, go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. There's no need to worry the rest of the time. Unfortunately, due to their lack of action and attention, they soon find themselves in Babylonian exile. Here we are, all these years later, and not much has really changed for us either. Not since the days of Jeremiah, and not since Jesus spoke to the people of Nazareth. We'd rather not be told that God loves those of whom we consider the opposition, or perhaps even the enemy. We don't like having to think about people or things differently than we're used to. We're not so comfortable leaving our pews in the relative safety of what we know to share the good news out there. Instead, most of us would rather stick with who and what we do know, being praised for what we have done, rather than facing what we haven't what we may have forgotten, who we may have wronged or neglected. Perhaps we've even grown a little too used to seeking God in church on Sundays while going about our own business all the other days of the week. That's what the people of Jeremiah's time seem to be doing, and that's how the people of Jesus' hometown seem to be living and that's how many people today, including many of us, seem to be spending our days. We tend to expect God to show up for us on our schedule, don't we? Yet, perhaps we've forgotten that God always shows up every day, everywhere, and for everyone. In today's second reading, Paul tries to help with a letter inspired by Jesus' commandment to love God and love each other. Although Paul's letter is often used at weddings, it was actually written to a fledgling church in Corinth whose members seem to have forgotten the very foundation of Jesus' ministry. There seems to be a bit of a, a power struggle among them, while some folk try to dictate to others who really belongs and what's permissible to do or to eat. They have many, many spiritual gifts, as Paul is quick to point out, but clearly they are struggling with relationships. Paul reminds them and us that no matter what we do, unless it's done with love, the act 
is meaningless. He says, even if I have faith to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Then he speaks of prophecies and even knowledge ending. He knows, however, that love has the power to impact every relationship in our lives. As Paul points out, love will never end. It is with this never-ending love that Jesus faces his family and friends, his neighbors and loved ones, yet the words that he speaks are things that they really don't want to hear. They're not happy hearing that God cares for pagans or anyone else who doesn't follow their rules and their ways. They want Jesus' attention focused on themselves, speaking God's love and God's grace to their community. Jesus, however, wants their attention focused on others, sharing God's love and God's grace to and for all people. Today in our hearing, Jesus invites them and us to take part in the fulfillment of his ministry for those in need, releasing the captives, helping the blind to see, letting the oppressed go free, and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor, which means a whole year when everyone's trespasses, debts, sins, and past deeds are forgiven. Jesus' hometown congregation just can't seem to hear his words of gospel. They hear only criticism and law. They can't see the opportunity that he offers. They see only the intensity of their anger and failed expectations. They don't recognize the needs of those who are different. They're focused only on their own. Maybe we're not all that different. Perhaps it is time for us to consider the things that we see and know clearly, as well as those things that we'd rather not see or think about at all. Is there someone that we'd rather chase off a cliff rather than listening to or accepting their voice or their story? Are there opportunities before us that we simply haven't noticed? Or perhaps we've chosen not to see them because of who and what they are. Today, Jesus reminds us that his proclamation of release and freedom is fulfilled for all people, not just within the hearing of those Nazarenes so long ago, but today, now, in our hearing as well. As we listen to Jesus' words, perhaps we'll hear within them an invitation to take part in the fulfillment of his ministry, to serve others, even those who are different, to take part in God's ministry right here at St. Paul's in a new or different way, to use our gifts, talents, and assets for the good of others, especially those in need outside of our doors. As a congregation, we join Jesus' ministry for the good of all people, helping to free those held captive by misconceptions and division, encouraging others to see what they've been missing in God's presence, standing up and speaking out for folks who've been oppressed in any way, reaching out to those who so desperately need to hear Jesus' words of good news and experience God's peace. Peace in Christ. It comes to each of us as we let 
go of our anger and self-interests, learning to truly love our neighbors. It comes to us through every act of ministry that is based in love. We're able to love because God first loved us. We love others because they too are beloved of God. Whoever they are, wherever they're from, whomever they love, whatever identity that they feel deep in their hearts, no matter how they look, the color of their skin, or the language they speak, let us come to know and to love them all, just as we are fully known and so beloved by God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 581, You Are Mine, hymn number 581.
I could. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. After the words, God of grace, you may respond, hear our prayer. Guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, teach us to live in humility on the earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, and brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, especially those on our prayer list and those we offer now, out loud or in our hearts. We pray for all those who are without We also pray for those who are affected or infected with all life, life threatening or life changing diseases. And we also pray for the congregation of St. Stephen. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayers. We praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never-ending love. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ our Savior. of Christ be with you always. Of course, the effects of the pandemic continue. So we're still not shaking hands or hugging, but we can and we should offer a sign of God's peace to others. Um, not just those who are here with a wave or a smile or, or a bow, um, but also to those who aren't with us, who may be with us online or who are homebound and cannot see us face to face. Let's try to maybe offer a text, an email, a card or a letter, a phone call. Let's continue to reach out to others with God's own peace and Christ's own love. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others, as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
Sorry, I was enjoying Elaine's music. <laughs> Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. And now let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to take out your little communion kits. If you forgot to pick one up, please raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one. If you have trouble opening it, please raise your hand and we'll make sure you get some help. Just peel back the top layer to reveal the wafer and put it in your hand. Then peel back the bottom layer to reveal the juice. And then hold them up so that I know when everyone is ready. See a couple people struggling maybe over here on the side. We got it? You got it? Okay, everybody's good. Come to Christ's banquet. Feast on God's gift of grace. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just time for a few announcements. As usual, we have been broadcasting on Facebook Live this morning, and the video will be posted to our Facebook page right after worship, and later to our YouTube channel. Both can be accessed from our website, which is www.stpaulsliverpool.org or www.stpaulsliverpool.org. If you or someone you know might benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let me know. Even if they don't want to visit or anything, I can at least keep them in my prayers. If it's an emergency, please call my cell phone or send me a text message. You can call the office or send an email or leave a message. I will reach out however I am able. Of course, we continue with COVID-19 mask requirements according to uh, the state and the CDC. Everyone who enters our building for whatever reason must wear a mask. If you're not feeling home, or home, if you're not feeling well, Please stay home. Help us to prevent illness from being passed to others. 
Our four-week Bible study has finally gotten kicked off uh, successfully last week, and we continue this Thursday with Chapter 2. I still have a few books, they're $5 each if you're interested, or if you would just like to study at home. Let's see, all about the food. So, we have some chili leftovers. You may have noticed when you came in. So a meal like uh, we were passing out yesterday is now $8 per meal. Um, if you would like the equivalent of two bowls, that's those plastic containers, um, that, those are $12, um, but they don't come with all the bags and stuff that's in it. So. Um, you've got some options for lunch today. How yummy is that? And of course, on February 2nd, that is this coming Wednesday, it is hump day at the American Legion in Liverpool. Um, and I am very excited because it is homemade goulash. So, um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what that is but it sounds really good. <laughs> and, and if uh, Sue says it's a good thing, then it's a good thing. Um, but it includes toss salad, roll, uh, dessert, and, and so forth. You can eat in or take out, um, pre-order, and so forth. So um, that also supports the American Legion, and it is a good thing to do. Now I invite you all to stand for the blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn today is Go My Children, hymn number 543. Go My Children. <laughs> into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God. I just want to uh, thank Elaine for uh, stepping in for Mary, who is on vacation, I don't know, for like six months or something. No, I'm just kidding. A, a few weeks, anyway. 
Um, so uh, we are grateful that Mary gets the rest she needs, and we are grateful for your talents today, Elaine. Thank you.